Hello. Hello. This is Dallas Cohen, the Rebound Coach. And I am very, very excited to share um, really amazing things with you tonight. If you are joining me uh, for the first time and or you are watching the replay and you're not sure who this is and what am I talking about? <laughs> My name is Dallas Cohen and um, I go by the Rebound Coach and I'll tell you a little bit about myself if we are brand new to each other. Um, before becoming the Rebound Coach, I was raised in a good Christian home. I had two parents that loved God and loved each other and were married for a lifetime until uh, until my mom passed, actually, and I saw what it was for um, a spouse to be a caretaker for their spouse. And um, and they were a really good example of what marriage could be. Um, at the same time, I was molested from the age of eight to the age of 16. And that radically affected um, how I saw myself, how I related to God in a faith faith-based home and for myself, how I related to men. So fast forward, um, I met a man and there were a lot of red flags. <laughs> there were a lot of red flags. Um, however, I'm a praying woman and I took those concerns to my God and felt that he was with us and he was for the decision for me to marry him. And so we did get married and, um, you know, some people say that they have this honeymoon period and then there's trouble. Well, that's not my story. <laughs> trouble came right away in our case and um, never really went away. We were about 15 days after the wedding um, when I found the first case of adultery. And there were many cases of adultery uh, throughout my our 10 year marriage. Um, and it never, so the trouble that came never really quite went away, it would just kind of go into the background and um, come back with a vengeance in some sort of crisis situation. And so it was what I called a cycle of coping and crisis where we would do okay for a little while and then something big would blow up and then we do okay for a little while and then something else would blow up. And the, the blow-ups became worse and worse and worse as the years progressed. Fast forward to um, January of 2020, things had just gotten um, completely haywire. And um, he eventually left for another woman. And it wasn't, you know, I'm telling you, I'm leaving now. And this, it was no, nothing like that. Um, he just kind of left and I had to find out where he went and what happened. And um, the very next day, I found out that not only had he left for another woman, but him and that woman had been uh, plotting my murder for months by the time I found out. Um, needless to say, that was a really scary time, um, a really, really scary time in my life. And I had to um, kind of reevaluate everything. <laughs> you look at all of your decisions, you look at all of your history, you look at, look at everything and decide, you know, how did I get here? I couldn't believe that this was my life. And I, you know, felt like I had made all the good decisions and I felt like I had followed, you know, what God had told me to do. And I, I had ended up where I ended up and, um, I had a choice, you know, I could allow the death that he had planned for me and the, uh, the limitations and the identity to tell me who I was, to tell me what I could have, to tell me what I was allowed to do, and even how many days I had left on the earth, or I could choose life. And so um, prior to all of that happening, I was um, a coach. I'd already been the rebound coach for some years, and I had been coaching women and, and couples on marriage and um, faith-based marriage and how to stay married despite difficult circumstances, because I certainly was very, very committed to that cause. So if you can imagine your entire life being threatened, you know, as a human being, as a child of God, as a wife, as a mom, um, as a coach, you know, and having an identity based on something that was crumbling, it was crumbling right before me. And not only was I personally 
you know, rocked, but I was very embarrassed. Um, everyone who knew me knew what I stood for um, professionally and personally. And to have that very thing um, fall apart, it was really a scary time. So um, through a divine set of events, and that's all I can tell you is that it was divine. Um, my life was spared. My children and I are safe and, um, and we have a new life. And so the title of today's uh, live, title of today's time we're here together um, is called how to, how to Make All Things New in Your Life. And so I wrote a book out of my experience in that marriage. And the name of the book is I Choose Life. You can see it right, right there. <laughs> Weird for me to point backwards, but right there. There, yes. Um, it's called I Choose Life, Rewrite Your Love Story and Change Your Legacy. And that's exactly um, what it's about. It's about choosing life. And so instead of that old identity and that old pattern and that old person, not just the, the person I was in the marriage, but prior to um, choosing life instead and choosing new and choosing fresh. And so I want to share a bit of some uh, some growth I've had in that area even recently uh, with you today and give you an invitation to have that kind of growth for yourself. So I'm very, very excited. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you're watching the replay, please uh, put comment, comment replay. Let me know that you're here. Let me know what you're getting out of this tonight. I have a lot to share in a small amount of time. So Huh. I hope to do that quickly. So um, again, to, this is about uh, making all things new in your life. And so often we kind of get stuck in, in what I call like a holding pattern. And for people like me who might be, you know, they you want to do better. You are working on yourself as best you can, um, but still feel like you're just kind of in that holding pattern place, that place of I want new, I want better for myself, I'm, I want better for my kids, I want better for my community. Um, and you might even be taking some steps, but just feeling like you're not getting anywhere. And so there is a way to break that up. Okay. And so I have three quick points, but I want to um, illustrate those in a story. So if you're taking notes, how to make all things new in your life. And in all areas, this applies to all areas of life. Number one, create a uh, create. Um, I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> create a shakeup out of your comfort zone. So part of the holding pattern, and and not just part of it. So different aspects of life affect um, our experience in a moment, but so much of it is in our control. More of it than we want to admit is within our control, and so creating a new life for yourself has a lot to do with how you choose. So you have a choice to, to get out of your comfort zone. And I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate all of these in, in a story that just happened recently. Um, but getting out of your comfort zone, number two, doing the hard things, <laughs> doing the hard things. And so listen, so if you're, if you're like me, you can be in a holding pattern and, and have done hard things. Okay. But there is, and I talked about this a couple weeks back. So if you are um, on the Rebound Coach Facebook page, you can go back uh, to, I think it's two weeks now, and see where I talked about glory in the struggle. Because a lot of times there is an, a martyr identity that, that is kind of idolized in our society that a lot of women take on. And it's not that we're not doing hard things, we do them. But for a reason of, you know, look how hard I work, look how tired I am, look how um, look how much I much weight I carry, you know, and um, and you might you might not know that's why that might be a subconscious kind of motivation for why you take on all that you have taken on. And sometimes we could benefit from delegating those tasks out or there there's help around us that we're not even considering because it's easier for us to carry that right that is still comfort zone even when um, it's difficult that doesn't make it not comfortable if we are accustomed to taking on that kind of weight okay so number one 
shake, create a shake up outside of your comfort zone. Number two, do the hard thing. So not like a martyr, not from that idea of, oh, I got to do it again. Oh man. You know, I'm always taking on all the things. Oh, no one else is going to do it. So I guess I have to do it. That's not what, what I mean by taking on the hard thing. What I mean is um, fighting to win instead of fighting not to lose. We oft, we're we going to fight, right? Like life is not a cakewalk. And there's seasons of easy and seasons of more difficult. Even if you've done everything right, there are still seasons in life, right? But often what we spend our energy toward, and this is very common for women, um, because we have a high, we have a safety need, we have a security need, right? So a lot of times, we what we end up doing is instead of fighting to win, win something we haven't won before, or win something um, new for us, we fight not to lose. We become very territorial, very clingy onto what we have or our, what we perceive to have. Sometimes it's not even real. <laughs> like you think you have control of a thing and you don't. And you're holding on for dear life because you feel like you have control of a thing and you might not. So um, so do the hard thing, not for a martyr identity, but to fight to win as opposed to fighting not to lose. And the third point is to make new choices. OK, as you're as you're fighting to win, there's always going to be that voice that comes and says, no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You're crazy. Uh, you don't have any proof. It's never been done before. And no. <laughs> and so I had a conversation with myself um, this past few days that was similar. It was like, aren't you going to do this thing? And the other me was like, no, I'm not going to do that thing. Don't you remember where you came from? Yes, I do. And that's exactly why I'm not doing that thing, because I'm not her anymore. And so I want to tell you how I got to that. Um, so this past weekend, I attended a conference. It's called a business results conference put on by uh, a company named Destiny Global. Um, and so this was the first time they were having such a conference. I'd never been to that before, but um, I've been to several of their events and they have a track record of excellence and a track record of results. I've been able to get personal results from their conferences and events. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to sign up when the opportunity came. And I had uh, some moxie going on. I was like, yeah, I'll have someone to care for my children and it's all going to work out. Well, I'm really blessed to have several people, several families that I can trust to care for my children. And I had reached out to all of them. <laughs> And as we got closer and closer to the date, this one couldn't do it, and that one couldn't do it, and that one couldn't do it. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do if no one can? And they were like, well, maybe I can do a half a thing and maybe. And and they were all saying no, essentially. Everybody said no. So my choice was um, it had opened up where they were doing live streaming of the event. It's like, well, I can stay home, just live stream the event. That's what I can do. Um, and I even told my children, I was sad, right? I was sad because <laughs> I wanted to be present in person. And I had told my children, well, um, you're more important than a trip, right? I even said that. And so I was like, ah, but part of me just was like, well, how could I? And this is a key. So if you're watching this uh, later on the replay, this is a key. Instead of thinking I can't, when the I can't comes up, Instead, just take a pause and say, well, how could I? And keep asking that until a solution presents itself. How could I? And I, well, maybe I could ask this person. I don't really ask them. Well, maybe I could uh, pay somebody, you know, a stranger, but a, a, a vetted stranger, you know, or hmm, what else could I do? I could ask the, the community that's going to be present, uh, local there, if anyone there can care for my children. And so not anything I had done before, it was outside of my comfort zone, um, but I reached out and did it. Just I put a post in that group. Hey, at first I said, y'all pray for me because if I don't get childcare, I'm not gonna be able to come. And I said, uh, does anybody, is anybody uh, providing childcare? And so people commented, not that they could do it. They just commented other things. 
And then, and then someone uh, reached out to me in private messages and said, you know, I don't, I don't usually do this, but I'd be willing to help you out. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. So, um, so I paid for two other plane tickets. That was another stretch out of my comfort zone. Like, oh man, I'm going to, I'm going to pay um, for two extra plane tickets and I'm going to have to pay this person to care for my children. And I'm going to have to pay triple the amount of food, not just feeding myself, but feeding them too. You know, oh, it's a big investment. Is it still worth it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Right. So I went back and forth, but eventually I'm like, you know, I'm committed. I'm just going to do it. Um, just going to do it. It's going to be an adventure. <laughs> tell my kids we're going to have an adventure. They were so thrilled. So fast forward, we get there. Um, the event was great. And the very first evening, I got what I didn't even know I was coming for. Okay. So I had shared with you, I've shared with you my story, and you know, you know, my ex husband and, and his adulteress had been, you know, plotting my murder. And there are some very specific things, um, memories that I have. Um, around those times and some of the things that they said and did that were very scary. And so I've, I've been in the personal development space for a while. I know the power of forgiveness. And so I had been saying, you know, in all of these months, I'd been saying, so-and-so, I forgive you. So-and-so, I forgive you. I release you. I bless you. Like I've said those words, right? And I know that it's a process. I know that healing is a process. Nobody's done overnight. This is not a presto kind of thing. Right. So I say those things in faith and I, you know, but that's about all. And it took me a while to say them, but I said them. Right. Okay. So this evening, uh, the first evening of this conference, the leader was talking about forgiveness and specifically forgiving abusers. And um, I, of course I'm all ears. Right. And so the speaker was discussing their own childhood abuse and how he forgave his abuser. And then they did an exercise that I've participated in before. Okay. They did an exercise where they say, if you have been hurt by a woman, please stand. And there's women that stand in proxy um, to ask forgiveness. And that, it, it, that gives you the opportunity as the receiver to offer forgiveness to a woman who has hurt you. And so you know, I thought mm, I can forgive mom for kind of overlooking the childhood abuse and just sweeping under the rug. I could forgive lots of people, but those weren't the people that were, that was, uh, coming up. Right. It was, uh, it was the adulteress that was coming up. Now, mind you, I had some very significant memories um, about that person. And there were some incidents that happened, um, really scary incidents that happened. One where my children were present and, um, I won't forget it. And so, uh, and so this poor woman <laughs> stood in front of me and says, um, I, I you know, um, will you please forgive me? Right. Will you please forgive me for whatever I did to you? Will you please forgive me? And I looked at her. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I just looked at her and I could not, I, there was resistance building. So in my mind, I was willing myself to say the words so and so I forgive you, like say the name connected to it. And I superimposed the adulteress's face over this woman's face. And I, I started to say it and I couldn't, like I was hyperventilating just, <sighs> and I couldn't get the word out. And um, as soon as I did, I got the name out and just burst into tears. Now, I'm not talking about like the tear that rolls down silently. I'm not even talking about like quiet crying. I'm talking about like the big, loud, boo-hoo, ugly cry, wailing kind of thing like that. <laughs> That's what was going on. Oh gosh. In the middle of this business conference where like everyone else was not nearly as loud. I know they were doing their own thing, but 
not nearly as loud. And, um, and I'm just like, <laughs> and I literally, I look at, it, I'm like, I don't think I can get through this. I don't think I can get, because I hadn't done it. Right. I just said the name and like burst in tears. And she says, well, you don't have to. And I, I looked up at her and I said, yes, I do. I guess I do. I didn't come all this far to only get this far. Like, I'm not going to back down and be like, no, I'm like, no, I'm here. You're here. Let's do this. And so it took me a little while longer. Um, but I, I did eventually get the words out. So, and so I forgive you. I release you and I bless you. Right. And so I was barely breathing. <laughs> I mean it. I mean it barely breathing. And I just sat down and my head's in my hand and I'm just crying. And, um, and then they say, okay. And I, and I have no idea what the rest of the room was doing. Like, I don't know how long I was taking. It felt like I was taking forever. Um, I didn't want to draw attention to myself or take longer than I was supposed to. I'm like, okay, okay. So, <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there and uh, then the leader calls for if you've been hurt by a man, stand up and for the men to do the same exercise. Well, I couldn't do any more. Like I just sat there and literally I was embarrassed because of how loud I was. And I was fantasizing about running out the door and thinking about how quickly I could gather all my things up so I could run away and and go hide somewhere. <laughs> and um just sitting there. I did not stand up for the men opportunity because I just didn't have the energy. And sitting there crying and I look up and I see that the leader that was speaking had come and was standing in front of me. I'm like, oh no. I'm like, oh no. Oh, I can't. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for thanks for joining. So I'm telling the story, telling the story of um the first night of the business results conference. And you'll have to um, go back because I'm like halfway through. So <laughs> um, so I, I was just crying and I couldn't stand up when the men were, um, men were doing their part because I just didn't have the energy and I was trying to run away. <laughs> so I was trying to get out and fantasizing about how to leave. And, um, and I, I look up and I saw that the leader um, of, of the night, the speaker for the night, um, was standing in front of me. I just kind of looked up and I'm no, I know my face was tore up. Like I know it because <laughs> I had just been like violently sobbing. So it was like, <gasps> like, <laughs> no, I know I looked crazy. And, um, and he's, he just said, are you ready? And I just looked at him like, what? <laughs> and I get what? Um, and he says, you don't, you don't have to, if you don't want to, but are you ready? And I said, I can try. And it was a whisper. Like it was a whisper. I can try. And he says, trying is all you have to do. And so he gave that same prompt, you know, on behalf of him who betrayed you and abused you, will you forgive me? And I, again, superimposed um, the face of my ex-husband on this person's face and just imagined him saying those words. And again, I willed in my brain, I I'm like, okay, you say, you say, I forgive you. Like, that's what you say now. <laughs> that's, that's what's your turn. That's what your part is to say. And it was very difficult. And again, I'm like, <sighs> you know, just like hyperventilating a little bit and um, trying to get the words out. But eventually I did get the words out. I forgive you. I release you. And I used his name. And, um, and you know, the, the leader just said some really encouraging things to me in that moment. And then he left and went back to the stage to do his thing. And, um, and I was like, oh my gosh. So I'm just sitting there and I'm just processing and breathing. And of course, people who are kind, you know, so the lady sitting next to me is like rubbing my back and people are like, like trying to give me hugs and trying to say words and I can't really hear any words. And I it's like, ah, I just want to go and be alone. And I knew that I was not, I wasn't done. I wasn't done 
like dealing with this. I wasn't done um, processing. And so the session ended and I just gather myself. And again, people are trying to be like, oh, I know I was loud. I was the big loud person in the room. I know it. <laughs> so matter of fact, later on, someone else uh, who had watched the event virtually, it was like, oh, was that you breaking down? I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, the breakdown heard around the world. Cause my oh, gosh. So um thank you, Jamie. I received that. I appreciate I appreciate your kind words. So I went, um, I literally waited until people had kind of filed out and I went into a uh the volunteer hallway, which is absolutely dark, and just stood there for a few minutes, like I need to be alone and I don't know where to go hide. <laughs> The room I was in had people in it, my kids, their caretaker. I had another roommate, like there's people up there. And I I was like, man, if I go over here, somebody will see me. If I go, like, I just didn't want to be bothered. And so, <laughs> yeah, the breakdown. Yeah. So uh, I went out and someone's like, hi, Dallas. And I'm like, I just, I just need a minute. <laughs> She's like, okay, it's okay. And so I found I found a little hallway where there was nobody. And I, you know, walked until I couldn't walk anymore. And I sat in a corner and just continued to release, just release. And um, the breakthrough in that moment was being able to speak um, well wishes for them. And I could not do that before. So before people would pray with me and they'd be like, and we're going to pray for him too and her because they need help. And I'd be like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't roll my eyes like I want to, but inside I was rolling my eyes. And um, even no matter how, you know, good or godly of a person you are, if you're a human being, you know, you have thoughts that are not, you know, the best all the time. And, um, and I just, you know, I had this feeling like, man, he should reap what he's put on me, right? You want the people who hurt you to also hurt. Now, that's not good. That's not the right thing to want, but it happens, right? So the breakthrough of that moment was being able to say, you know, I pray that you're able to get healing, for both of them, that you were able to get healing and, and able to get deliverance and, you know, know the real God and and be reconciled to him. Um, just to be able to wish those things and, and some other things that I won't share, um, but to be able to wish them well and pray that, pray good things for them is something I could not do prior to this past weekend. So it was, it was huge. It was huge. And I'll tell you, number one, it wasn't some, I didn't know that I was coming for that when I signed up for a business conference. <laughs> okay. Um, now I, did I know that they were going to do forgiveness? I don't know. I've been to their events before where they've done that particular exercise. I didn't know they were going to do it then, but even if so, I didn't know that I was going to get that. And, um, it's only been a couple days. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> only been a couple days um, since that experience. And there, I know that there's much, there's much fruit to come out of it. What I can tell you so far is that I've had um, power to make new decisions. So again, the three points I gave you on how to make things new for yourself. Number one, create a shakeup out of your comfort zone. Number two, um, do the hard things, not from a martyr identity, but from a uh, play to win instead of playing not to lose, right? And the third was to make new choices. So even this morning, so um, I'll be talking in a, in a minute about Yom Teruah and Rosh Hashanah and, and that part of all things new. Um, but this morning, so today was Yom Teruah, it started sundown last night to sundown tonight. And if you're on the East Coast like myself, sundown has happened a couple of hours ago. And um, and so I didn't I didn't work. Um, it was a day of rest. And 
even then, like I had some things I wanted to do that weren't work so much, but things I wanted to get done. And um, I didn't do them as quickly as I could have. And so normally I spend a few moments beating myself up over that and like, come on, like, get yourself together. You're so lazy. Like you take too long, get, get going, get yourself ah, like fussing at myself, which is not very healthy at all for a lot of reasons. <laughs> so, and so today when that voice tried to raise itself and it started its diet tribe in my head, I had power to silence it and say, that's not how we're going to talk to ourselves. And it was pretty powerful. Just that by itself was pretty powerful. And then say, nope, that's not who we are. It's not who we are. And that's not how, that's not how I'm going to treat myself. We're not going to say that to ourselves today. We're going to make a new decision. So, so you can do that too. When you are, up against um, that voice for yourself, that voice that beats yourself up, that tells you you're not worthy, that you're not worth it, that you are you did something wrong again and how dare you and how could you and just that, that condemning voice, you have the power to say no. You have the power to say no to that voice. And it was so empowering for me to say no, no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to beat ourselves up. We're not going to talk to ourselves like that. Just You just pick up and you make the next, next right decision that's in front of you. Even if you just made a bad one, you stop. All right. Make the right decision going forward. And so, um, yes, exactly. Reframing and remembering that voice is not from God. Absolutely. So, um, so that was a powerful moment. Um, and, and there's also just felt, you know, lighter around the entire situation. Do I think that's the last time I'm going to cry over it? No. <laughs> Do I think that is the last thing I have to deal with concerning that? No, nope, not at all. Um, but I can tell you that I got a level of freedom that I would not have had if I did not press through all of the challenges that came before. If I had said, you know what, I don't have childcare, I can't go, or you know what, well, they have live stream, or I'll just wait for the next one. If I had done all those things, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had that experience the same way. And what would, it was completely intended for me to be in that room, but I still had to, I still had to overcome. Um, conflicts and objections and money. And I had to overcome all the things to be in the right place at the right time to get what I needed. So um, today, as I mentioned, is Yom Tur or or it just passed. So uh, uh, today is Tuesday. So um, Monday sundown to today sundown uh, was Yom Teruah, or you may have heard of Rosh Hashanah. Um, Rosh Hashanah uh, means head of the year, um, and Yom Teruah means the day of blowing or the day of trumpets. And so it was called Yom Teruah in the Bible, and uh, and culturally, it's people have you know turned made it into Rosh Hashanah head of the year, um, which is not accidental, but is a little bit different of a theme. And so, <laughs> day of trumpets uh, is has a lot of deep meaning, and I can't go into all that today. Um, but what I can say, this is a shofar behind me. <laughs> That's why it's here. Uh, a little bit, little ram's horn. This is what a ram's horn. Oh, there we go. That looks good. A little ram's horn shofar looks like. Um, and it's exactly what it sounds like, a ram's horn. And it makes a loud trumpet sound. And, um, and there's a lot of um, symbolism for what this means in the Bible. Uh, for the past, present, and future, and um, and Yom Teruah also is that the head of the civil new year. So they call that you know new year um, when they count the years in the Hebrew. So it's uh, it's Hebrew year fifty seven eighty two now, and and a new year is just like it's just that a new counting of time and an opportunity to start again to make all things new. And I wanted to invite you who you're new, which is pretty exciting. So um, I want to show a tiny video 
um, the, and, and the, the atmosphere that, that I experienced over this past weekend, being able to forgive and bless um, my oppressors, my abusers, um, was pretty powerful. And it was powerful for me. And again, I wouldn't have experienced that if I had not said yes and pressed through the objections to get to get where I needed to be. And so this is an invitation for you also for an event called Sanctuary. It's coming up in two and a half weeks. My goodness, it's coming up so soon. Um, and so that that can be an objection for somebody or you know, it has cost and that could be an objection for somebody. Or, you know, I've got, I've got to arrange something for my kids or I've got to do this or that with a family member or there's this other conflict. Like these are real life situations and, you know, good, bad or indifferent, they have to be overcome to get out of your comfort zone and make all things new for yourself. So I'm going to play this video and I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, I'm back. I made a mistake there. <laughs> um, I get peace every time I watch that video, like every time. And so it's sanctuary is not for everyone. There's only 10 women that can come. Several women are um, finalizing their spots within the next day or so. Um, so if this tugs at your heart, if you know that you belong there, I highly recommend that you go to the reboundcoach.com slash sanctuary and save your spot. Um, it is for women who are pulled in every direction. Um, whether or not you've experienced the kind of abuse I have, um, so many of us have experienced trauma in one way or another or betrayal in one way or another. And we've learned how to cope. Um, we've learned how to get day to day. We've learned how to take care of our responsibilities. We are strong women, but that's not enough. Strength does not equal wholeness. And we're often strong enough to survive and strong enough to take care of others, but it is out of our comfort zone to fight and take care of ourselves. And I call it a fight because you'll have to fight the objections. You'll have to fight um, other people's expectations of you. You'll have to fight the old version of you that tells you you're not worthy of this kind of experience. You're not worthy of pampering. You're not worthy of small, intimate attention. You're not worthy of being special and important. Well, I'm here to tell you, you are. You are. You're, you are worth your own decision for wholeness. You're worth your own decision for receiving things and, and being made new. You are worth those things. And this is your invitation and this is your chance to receive that. So you can go to the reboundcoach.com slash sanctuary and you can register right away. If you have questions about the event, you can contact me. 
um, right on that page, there is a link and says, uh, schedule a, a time with the rebound coach to be considered. You can click there and, and have a, a quick Zoom chat um, to answer your questions about the event. Um, it's in Clearwater Beach. It is two and a half weeks away on September 24th, 25th, 26th. And for many of you watching this live today, it's for you. And the first 10 women to secure their spots are the women who are going to receive it this month. And so I just invite you to come along with me, come away with me, to choose yourself, to choose life. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, I really appreciate you spending your time with me. And until next time, choose life.